All right, so today we are checking out the Fallout <clears throat> Wasteland Warfare uh, starter set. This is the high-quality resin starter set. Big shout-out to my brother-in-law, John, who sent this to me. John, you're the man. Thank you very much. I can't wait to put these together. Now, we'll take a look at what's in the box. Ignore the messy workstation I, I have been painting. Um, all right, well, let's take a look here. So there's dog meat, and there's some uh, survivors there, or the... Uh, yeah, there's the Soul Survivor and another, another it's a Raider or a, I don't know who that is. But look at the detail in, in the bases. Like, even the, the bases have, are super detailed. Now, I have not seen the plastic ones, but I mean, obviously the high-level resin ones are pretty nice. There's some more Survivors. There's some more of the highly detailed bases. Go with them. And then here we have... One of our super mutants, and then the power armor. Yeah, it's probably one of the ones I'm going to put together first and paint, just because the power armor is awesome. Uh, and then, of course, we have some mutant dogs. These are the mutant hounds. Okay. And Fallout 4, usually. A lot of experience cooking up dog meat. I, of course, I would never eat the mutant hound stuff. And we have some more of the super mutants. The sledgehammer. And there's their size bases, huge. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. And then that is the beast right there. That is the uh, death claw. That's its own detailed base as well. That is going to be awesome put together. <clears throat> that is awesome. But then of course we have all the cards and stats for all of them. And the starter set comes with, you know, your first scenario and everything else. So I'm going to be putting these together. We're going to put together a video on how to play and a video on what these things look like put together. I'll do like a, maybe do a paint tutorial on some of these. So yeah. Super excited. John, thank you once again. This is amazing. And, um, yeah, we're going to put these things together now. All right. So we're going to try and prep some of these Fallout Wasteland Warfare resin miniatures. Now, when working with resin, um, there's a few things you got to know that's a little bit different than working with plastic. All right. So the first thing you got to do well, when you clip, like anything, you clip these off, uh, the, the little sprues, and you got to clean them. you got to clean all the mold lines and everything off of them. Now, this is the tricky part, because you're going to want to use an X-Acto knife to scrape the mold lines off. Uh, now, they do have mold line scrapers that are, um, well, they're kind of like a, f a flat edge. Now, you don't want to use those because they, you can too easily scrape off the detail on resin models with those um, flat ones. Now, the, the, the problem is the you can also scrape it off with the X-Acto knife, but the X-Acto knife gives you a little bit more control. You're not just, um, you know, uh, scraping a big, wide, flat, you know, dull thing across the thing. Now, on plastic, on hard plastic, that's perfect because it takes the mold lines off great. But on a resin model, it's going to really take off too much detail. So you just got to be careful with them. And if you want to use files, you need to be very careful with files because you can f file deep grooves into the resin real easy. It's a very soft material. Okay, so that's the first thing to keep in mind when you're taking them off the sprue. Another thing, especially with this Wasteland Warfare, now you'll see the, how the base is connected to the sprue. Now, normally you're going to be tempted to clip it off, right, with clippers. But the problem is this thing is so wide right here that... You know, you try and clip it off, you won't be able to get all the way through in one clip. And if you clip halfway through, it's going to take a chunk out of the bottom part of this um, base. So you're, you're going to have to either use um, uh, either a miniature saw, like this one here, to saw it off carefully, or you're going to have to be careful with it and cut through it with the X Acto knife. So. That's your best bet for taking everything else you can pretty much on this I've seen. You can clip off the sprue like normal, 
but for these bases, because it's a really wide clip that it's, it's connected by, and it's connected flush to the bottom, so when you try and clip it part, part way, it'll take a chunk out of the bottom. And that's what happened. We don't even see it on this one, but yeah, it took a kind of a, a chunk there, so... Yeah, I mean, we've I've since sanded it, so it's not as bad, not as noticeable, but uh, yeah, it'd definitely take a chunk out. Now, another thing when working with resin, and it's very important, is that you need to clean the resin models. Now, all of these have um, basically a mold release agent that's on them. So the resin, the, the liquid resin doesn't bond to the silicon molds. So all the silicon molds have this, this uh, and you can't see it. And this is the problem with these is that you can't see this, so you can never know when it's completely off. This is not a big problem here, um, as much as these miniatures are, are far cleaner than like, well, like a Forge World ones. If you ordered from Forge World, those resin miniatures they're really they're awesome, and there's some really, but they're really big, and they use like a like I don't know some kind of industrial um, agent, uh, mold release agent in that. So, in fact, some of it's so bad sometimes in some of the Forge World stuff you can actually see it. You can actually see the agent on there. So. Um, the only way to do it is you see you got to keep scrubbing. The way how to clean this is pretty simple. You have you take an old toothbrush, you take a little some little warm soapy water and some clean water, and then you're just going to soak all your pieces. Now after you've taken them out and you've cleaned them, yeah, you got all the, the mold lines off of them. You just kind of sit them in there and get the, uh, the release agent off of them. Now, the dish soap works pretty easy. You just got to take your old toothbrush here and you just go through and you give them a good scrub. Make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies there. Don't, don't be, you know, you don't need like a vigorous scrubbing on here, but you want to make sure you get in anywhere. A soft bristle toothbrush is the way to go for this. Um, like I said, resin is very delicate and you definitely don't want to uh, you know, be scraping up or taking off some of the some of the pieces. Now, um, I said it's warm soapy water. Don't make it too warm, all right? Because that's also how you fix these resin pieces. If you have like a bent, uh, like uh, you know, some bent pieces on the resin model, whether it's a sword or a gun or you know something board, um, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to. Uh, take that piece and put it in warm water. The, actually, the warmer the better, the warmer the quicker it is, but seeing how you want to have control over it, you don't want to use boiling water because you're going to want to, when you dip it in the water, you want to dip it in with your fingers and have some control over it. As where if you have tweezers, I've seen, I, I haven't done it myself, but I've seen people to use tweezers to dip their model, the resin model into boiling water and then the tweezer, it softens, and then the tweezer squeeze into the model. And there's like tweezer marks on the model. So you don't want to do that. So you want to have as much control over as possible, so you want to use your hands. Um, when correctly, so you dip them in the warm water for a few minutes. You can even use warm tap water. Uh, I usually mine microwave vine for just a little bit here. Um, and then after you take it out, then you can bend the model in the position you need. It's very malleable. Hold it in position and let it cool, right? And once it starts cooling in that position, you put it in the cold water, uh, some cold, clean water, and then it'll harden that way. So that's the main thing. So now we got the, we scrub this one pretty good. All you gotta do is you just put it in, get it a rinse off in the non-soapy water. There we go. And then set it off to dry on your towel, on your paper towel, napkin, whatever you're doing here. Um, and that is what you need to do to prep it because if you don't have that, if you don't, all resin models will have the release agent on it. Um, even ones that come out and they're, they're cleaned, it's going to have a little bit of residue on there, and the paint won't stick to it. You'll, it'll chip off. It'll uh, some of the times the glue won't stick to them. So that's the main thing. Just uh, scrub them. A little soapy, a little warm soapy water. Scrub them with an old toothbrush. Dip them in the the cold clean water. Let them dry completely before you start working with them. Uh, and that's the main thing. So there you have it, guys. We'll be back with some paint. Okay, guys, we're back. Uh, I've started assembling some of these that have gotten clean and dried. 
Uh, this is the power armor. Oh my goodness, this thing is awesome. Um, I've, you know, I was putting this together and I realized there's a couple resin tips I should probably give you guys. Um, one, the glue you want to use for this is super glue. Now, um, there are some epoxies and stuff like that that'll work with resin. Um, but, I mean, for what the thing most people are going to have is uh, just regular old super glue. And that's going to be fine. Now, the problem with super glue and resin is, like with, mo with metal models, you use super glue and you have a few minutes to, to toy with it to, you know, make sure it's in the right spot. Super glue tends to bond to resin very quickly. Um, so, you don't have a whole lot of play time with it. So, when, you got to make sure you want to pre-fit, you want to dry fit everything on here. All right, so make sure when you're putting these models together that it's all dry fit and, um, you know, you know everything fits perfectly. You don't need to trim because once you add that super glue on there, uh, it's going to bond pretty quickly. And then when you try, now I know super glue is pretty brittle and like metal models, you can pull them apart fairly easily with super glue. But with resin models, you're, if you pull them apart, you're going to tend to like, uh, you could screw up the model. Now, one thing that will buy you a little bit of time is I use this, the gel, the thick super glue. Now, this is like just dollar store gel super glue here. I don't recommend it for most things, but for resin, it's really good because it takes, because it's thicker, it'll take a little bit longer to bond, so you actually have a little wiggle room to make sure you got everything in the right position, right? Especially with some of these models that have uh, two arms and a weapon, and you gotta line everything up, you gotta line them at the shoulder, two arms at the shoulders, and line up the hand with the the gun too so those are pretty hard to you know because you only have two hands you gotta try and two hands and three things to hold um and fit perfectly so when you're gluing them together i would use the thicker gel super glue just to give you a little extra time to fit things in place and then you know it bonds pretty quickly i mean these things are awesome and you get an idea now this is power armor so it's supposed to be bigger than here is See comparison. There's a Games Workshop uh, normal human. Well, chaos normal human. Uh, so you can give an idea how much bigger the uh, power armor is. Uh, now this is also heroic scale, so it's got much bigger hands and much bigger proportions. As where this is true scale, which means the problem with true scale is you're going to get itty bitty wrists and small hands. And you know, and that kind of thing. But it looks, but it's more realistic. So these models are awesome to put together. Uh, just like I said, just be careful when you're cleaning the models, and be careful gluing them together. But I just want to get an idea of what this is looks like put together. All right. Okay, here we go. We got them all put together, uh, and ready to prime and paint as soon as they dry, and get them all set here. Now there was a few more things issues I ran into putting these together. I figured I want to get on film here uh, and talk to you guys about. One, <clears throat> there was, uh, there are a few gaps to fill, uh, mainly in the super mutant where the arms attach. There's a couple gaps and in the, I don't know if you can see that, the shoulder of the dog. I had to get some green stuff out and fix those. <clears throat> but for the most part, these are really nice resin models. They go together really easy. Um, I think I'm all washed up and dried. They're this death claw is amazing. Um, now there were a few bent pieces I had to actually heat up and bend back into place. And one of them was the hammer here <clears throat> was bent a little bit, and one of the death claw middle claws. I mean, that middle one there was all kind of was bent all over to the side. So I had to heat that up and bend it over. But, oh, and the Nora's gun on the on her back. Um, that had to get straightened out. But those are the only three ones that needed to, you know, heat up and, and bent back into place. The rest of them went together pretty easily. Now you can see <clears throat> these are true scale models. And again, if we take a look at some of the GW models that are not true scale, they're heroic scale... Well, if I had one here. Uh, oh, here we go. Found him. <clears throat> so, you can see the they're much... The GW ones are 
bulkier, but they're roughly the same size. So, and then if you compare like <clears throat> a Space Marine, oh, here we have a oh, Death Guard Marine to the T-51 Power Armor. You can see that they're roughly the same size. I mean, obviously he's a Plague Marine, so he's fatter. But, I mean, roughly the same size. And most of the bases, uh, like the Death Claws on a 60 mil. <clears throat> so, but that is a lot of miniatures you get in this deceptively small box. So, um, the detail in these are amazing. I've worked with quite a lot of Forge World, mo Forge World models, and these are top quality. I would say these are better quality than, than GW resins. I don't know if I could go as far as to say they're better quality than, like, <clears throat> GW models, period. Their plastics are have gotten to amazing quality. Um, just as a... I don't know if you can see this comparison, of like, detail-wise. This is the 500th store anniversary figure uh, Blade Geist. And <clears throat> that's just amazing... It's gray, it's hard to tell without being primed and painted, but the detail in the pla and just a simple two piece snap fit plastic model is amazing. So <clears throat> I don't know if uh, I could say it's, it's, but the detail in these is amazing, for, especially for resin, and they definitely beat anything GW does resin wise. So, um, yeah, there you go. Just like I said, be careful with them. It's the Probably the hardest part was I, this guy's arm, was probably the hardest one to put together. Everything else went together pretty quickly. Um, and that's because I tried to save time by using the regular super glue instead of the thick super glue to have it bond quicker because I was lazy and got fat, tried to get fast with it. Uh, and then the arm wasn't quite adjusted right. I had to pull it apart. And once you pull it apart, it, it the bond isn't there. It doesn't instant bond anymore. So then I had to hold it and wait for it to dry with super glue, like an old metal mini miniature. So that was kind of a pain. But here you have it, guys. This is the starter set, collector's edition resin models for Fallout. I'll have another video where I start painting these bad boys up, but I want to get them together and show you what all you got in that starter set box. Three super mutants, two mute hound, mutant hounds, T-51 armor, three survivors, you get dog meat, you get Nora, lone survivor, and you get this giant death claw over here. So that is quite a bit in the one box here, and they are amazingly detailed. So I can't wait to paint these things up here, so we're going to wait for these to get dry, and then we're going to go out and prime them. And then in the next video, we'll, we'll start painting them. All right? I uh, want to thank John, my brother-in-law, once again for sending these to me. These are amazing. Thank you very much, sir. I'll keep you informed when um, I get them all painted up. Um, okay, and in the meantime, um, leave comments down below. Uh, tell us what you think. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. And if you want to check out our other channel, The Grizzled Geek, there's a link down below to check out that channel as well. So we'll be back with some more... Fallout Wasteland Warfare model painting. Thank you.